Hello everyone. All right, uh, let's get right back into it. Um, so for this video, uh, what we're going to cover is um, just doing some really quick scene fixes uh, with regard to our photo textures. Um, and we're also going to block in our, we're going to begin blocking in our color. Um, we're going to start setting up some of our details sort of off to the side. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about mixer brushes um, and how to use those uh, to create detail in your scene. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is uh, there's a few things in the scene that we where we kind of left it that don't look quite right, right? So, uh, for example, uh, our roadway is not joined here, right? We've got we've got kind of a big gap in the roadway, and I also noticed that our windows are are kind of uh, I painted them upside down. Uh, so actually. Uh, what should be happening with the windows is we should see a reflection going across the the axis right here uh, along the sidewalk and the same thing uh, going in the other direction uh, so i'm going to make uh, some quick detail fixes you may um, you may see in later videos i've i've made some other uh, little detail fixes um, but uh, sometimes you know things don't just uh, pop out to you right away uh, sometimes you have to sort of work on them as you go Okay, so uh, first and foremost, uh, let's talk about the roadway and, and what we can do to maybe fix that a little bit. So I need to find my road layer, and that is not it. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Here's our road. Now, remember that this is applied as an overlay, so I'm going to go ahead and apply it as normal. I'm also going to remove any sort of lighting that might be on top of it so that we can just very easily uh, address this. Um, I'm not going to do anything really major here. Uh, I'm just going to grab a brush and I'm just going to alt click to grab a color. Um, definitely you want to make sure that you're changing back to normal instead of overlay. If I were to do overlay, right, and cover and and select this, you'll see that it gets way, way, way too dark. The reason is because I'm selecting a a, a color that is darker than the original, right? And uh, if I if I paint with that, it will it will appear darker. And if you were to select that and paint with that, it would appear even darker, right? Because overlay is overlay is about contrast, right? So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, there's there's really not much to do for fixing stuff up. You know, this is this is kind of where you use painting is to sort of fill in the blanks in your scene and get things to look you know about right. You know, there's other things that you could you could paint in here as far as details. Uh, you know, usually there's like tire marks for you know going around, and you don't have to know exactly what that looks like, right? But you know, you could do stuff like that. You could actually uh, paint in, you know, cracks in the road, sealant, that sort of thing, uh, if that was something that was of interest to you. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do here really quickly uh, is we're going to fix these windows. Uh, so what you would do uh, to fix the windows is you would uh, create a new layer. Uh, now let's see here. I'm going to move up a bit. I'm going to move up a bit here. Go to my windows. And I'm just going to use the polygonal lasso tool. I don't have to do anything really super crazy or major here. Right, if I don't get these quite right, I just hold the shift button down and just go over what you had before. All right, pretty straightforward. And I'm actually just going to grab, I know that there's I know that there's some splits here, but I'm just going to grab all of this and 
I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, on this new layer here, I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to grab black paint. And I'm just going to brush right over it. I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit. I'm grab an eraser. And then I'm just going to paint out the parts I don't want covered. Control click. <clears throat> and now I can address all of this. Right, so the way that I'm going to do that is just grab some of the sidewalk here and I'm just going to brush in. Right, we don't necessarily, we want that fall off, that light fall off to be pretty heavy uh, for these windows. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and brush that in like that. And already our windows are looking quite a bit better, quite a bit better. Okay, um, so what you would want to do, obviously, is, is locate um, any problem areas that you have in your scene um, before you start adding in any heavy texturing. Um, go ahead and take care of those areas and uh, get them all fixed up uh, because you're going to need a really nice foundation before you start doing things like blocking and color, right? You're trying to work with basically one dimension at a time, in this case, value. Once you start adding color in, then you have color and value to work to deal with. Uh, so uh, you know, be a little be a little careful. So um, when you block in color, um, let's move on to that next. Um, probably what I would recommend doing is, yeah. So first of all, make a new folder called let's call it value. And what we're going to do is we're just going to grab all the stuff here and we're going to drop it into the value folder, right? Okay, um, so above that, let's make a new layer and we'll call this color block. And uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're just going to use the polygonal lasso tool. Um, and we are going to just do one of these. We're going to grab all of the space. I'm even just going to click here. This doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is blocking, so there we go. All right, I'm going to grab my uh, paint bucket tool. And I'm going to fill it with a sort of bricky type color, right? Um, if you want to get an exact color, obviously you can just grab the color from the, the brick examples uh, that we pulled from uh, to make these, these sorts of brick sheets. But I'm going to pick something like this, sort of an orangey reddish color. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that color in. Uh, over here, <clears throat> for this facade here, I'm going to grab all of this. I'm going to choose another brick color, um, and I'm going to make make this a little bit lighter, kind of a little bit more of a sandy color here. And we'll uh, oop, control Z to reselect that, and then control D to deselect. Right. So we have these. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. These big sort of color blocks here, and again, you can do these on different layers if you want to. Uh, for time, I'm just going to leave them on one. But when we move our layer blending uh, to overlay, we can sort of see, you know, generally how all of this is going to start to come together. Uh, we're going to grab our polygonal lasso tool again. Uh, I'm just going to grab this. Uh, th this sort of darker paint, as I recall, was kind of a, a kind of a dark bluish green. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and grab something that's around that color, and we'll drop that in. Now, uh, again, you know, don't worry too much if all of this stuff looks like uh, garbage <laughs> for right now. Uh, it's not really, uh, it's not really super important. Again, we're just trying to get a general sense of what's going to go where. 
you know. I'm also going to I'm also going to go into my value area here. I'm going to grab my windows that I just did and I'm going to get get my color off of those windows. And the reason that I'm doing that is because uh, my street area here is going to have a different color applied to it. Uh, we're also going to want to do something with this background and with the side of the building here. So let's address the background first. Um, I'll do a new layer here. And for this, we're going to actually just go into the city BG layer. And then on my new layer above, and uh, you know, this could be in the background too. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna fill this in. Now, uh, you know, a lot of people will probably start with, you know, blues or whatever, and you can, you know, if, if you've got a, a day scene, we'll set it to overlay, and uh, you know, that might look fine. You might also pick out some some of these creamier colors here. Uh, you know, why aren't these colors as bold? Don't forget, you know, you have things like atmospheric perspective to, uh, to worry about. And we don't really care about these buildings so much in the background. We really just care about, you know, our, our buildings in the foreground. Uh, again, uh, let's, uh, let's then take care of our road. Let's call this one road. And we'll actually just grab the sidewalk in with it too. Again, we're just, we're just blocking things in here. Ah, where's my lasso tool? There we go. All right, so uh, we'll just pick like a darker gray color. And then we'll do that as, uh, I mean, it could be multiply and maybe you just pull the opacity back a little bit. I might take some of this blue color lighten up the road a little bit. Don't forget that roads are, uh, you know, they're not black. They tend to be, you know, gray, even a creamier color depending on, you know, time of day. All right, and uh, <clears throat> that'll work for getting things blocked in. All right, so we have we have foundational colors that we can that we can work off of. I'm not gonna worry about the side of the building here for, uh, for the time being. Um, well, I suppose I could. Let's just do that real quick. And for this side of the building, and again, I just went back into my color block. I'm just going to grab that. And, okay, that's done. All right, uh, so we have our colors blocked in. Now what we want to do is we want to think about details. Like, what is this type of store going to be uh, in a small town? Or, you know, what, what sorts of, uh, what sorts of uh, buildings are we going to have on this, uh, on this corner? Remember when we're talking about scenes, we're, we're thinking about a couple of things, right? We're thinking about the structure, the overall structure of the scene. And we're also trying to think about how to sort of um, create a counterpoint to all that structure by creating um, some chaos in, in, in some of the detail. So like storefronts are a great place to create a little bit of uh, chaotic interest uh, in your detail. Um, there's lots of things that happen at stores, right? There's lots of uh, posters and there's branding and all these different things. So I'm thinking I might do something like that. The other thing is that this scene looks a little clean and a little bit boring. Uh, so I'm going to think about what I want to do for those for those details to sort of create more of a concept piece, more of a story that's going to happen in here. Now I happen to have um, some stuff for, whoop, don't do that, make sure you're on auto select. Um, if I go back to my forge over here, I've created some branding stuff already. Um, these are just some logos that I had sort of uh, you know, uh, from an from an old project. Uh, this was a 3D model that I created for an old project, and I just went ahead and added some text called that just says planetoids for whatever reason. Um, I'm thinking that this corner area here could maybe be like a um, maybe a restaurant of some kind, um, maybe a nice uh, like corner bistro or something like that. Uh, so I'm gonna 
I'm gonna grab lock that down. So I'm gonna grab uh, these sorts of things. Now, one of the ways that you can um, create your own brands and logos and stuff, um, just grab your, your text tool. Uh, I'm just gonna use my name here. Right, so, so maybe it's not Berkeley's, maybe it's Andrew's. Okay. Um, how do I how do I edit this? Uh, so I would hit uh, double click on the T, right, and then all of your information is up here. You can change your um, you can change your type to whatever type you want. You can change your coloration to whatever color you want. Uh, say you'd like to put a stroke around the outside of your um, your text. Uh, you can do that by double clicking here and then um, on your layer style go to stroke and you would say like outside and you can see I can put a stroke around the name. There we go. Um, if I so desire I could add things like glows, all sorts of things. Now, if I double click on the text, the, I also have another option here, which is um, to warp my text. So if you wanted to do something like uh, an arc to your text, you know, you could, you could do that. And uh, you could use that as branding. Um, if you have old drawings or, you know, whatever, uh, go, go ahead, feel free to use them. Uh, you could also go into a site like, uh, you know, if you're going to do a billboard, you could go onto a site like Unsplash where you can um, use um, uh, commercial uh, commercial looking images uh, to create something that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily need to pay, uh, uh, pay money to use, uh, stock photography, and then you could just add your own text to that. Anytime you're, you're making brands, anytime you're making uh, imagery, uh, that's going to go on billboards or something. Uh, what I'd like you to remember is just to be careful um, not to use copyrighted material. Um, make sure you make your own stuff um, and definitely make sure when you make your own stuff that you're using references, right? Any one of these things could be its own little project, right? So I'm going to get rid of my name here. That's not super important. Move this off to the side. Okay, so what I'm going to do mostly here is just get all my branding and all my imagery that I'm going to pull into this scene uh, a little bit later, I'm just going to get that sort of set up off to the side. Um, so uh, just treat all of those as their own tiny little projects that you're that you're kind of working on. Think about what it is that you want to put uh, on your windows, uh, how you'd like to display things. Um, it's up to you. It's up to you. Now one other thing that I want to show before we close out this video um, is, is a type of brush and the brush is called a mixer brush. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use it to create detail um, because I'm not going to. I'm not sure I'm going to have a chance uh, later in some of these other videos, but I want to show you how to use it. It's really really handy. Okay, so I've got a picture here of a crowd. Say I wanted to make um, a parade and I wanted a, a crowd lining my street. Uh, one of the things that I could use is a is a a mixer brush. Uh, on something like this. So if I create a layer above this um, and I grab my mixer brush and I do that by clicking and holding and grabbing mixer brush on my uh, brush in the tool palette. You'll notice that I, I've given you some mixer brushes to try out for class. Uh, this is in uh, class mixer. Um, I've grabbed this uh, sample brush 9.47. And just like any other type of brush that's out there, you can go into brush settings and adjust things like your spacing and whatever. Uh, we've used um, mixer brushes a little bit in the past to create uh, blending techniques, right? That's with this thing unselected. But when you turn it on, you see that uh, it sort of creates a vacuum for the brush. So what does that mean? It means that um, I can use anything that I've painted as part of my brush. So for example, if I take, or I can take a, a, a piece of, of imagery. So um, if I have my brush, um, I can hold Alt down just as if I was going to select uh, paint. Um, and depending on the size of my brush, 
here. I'll show you. Uh, I'm going to select a part of this image. And I'm going to say sample all layers. Ah, right. So here's, you can see the image that I'm selecting here. And if I go onto a new layer, right, I can paint with that image, which is pretty super. Uh, and if I wanted to do something in the background, like get some of these background uh, guys here, uh, I could grab that and then I could paint with that in the background. So you could make presumably pretty large groups of people and then just paint in your own little figures here and there to sort of break up the, the repetition in the image. Uh, this can be a really, really super uh, thing. Um, by the way, I mean, the size of this depends on the size of your brush. So if you were to uh, make your brush a lot smaller, right, it's only going to select this small part, right? And if I select it in the foreground, you know, I'm only selecting, I'm only selecting what the brush sees. So this is also a bit of a camera as well, right? This can be really handy if you're trying to grab textures. It can be really handy if you're trying to grab things like trees. Now, if you were going to paint, uh, you know, foliage and you had a nice uh, tree like this from uh, textures.com, uh, you could certainly paint with it. Uh, one thing that you'd want to be careful to do is when you're using your mixer brush on the tree, you'd want to make sure to say that you're not trying to sample all layers. Otherwise, you're going to sample the background. Uh, but you could. Uh, sample that tree and you can see that it shows up with the clear background there. If I do a new layer, uh, I can paint with that with that tree. Right now maybe this isn't the right brush, but you can see how quickly uh, you can you can build you can build texture uh, using that using that image. You know, even if you were going to paint stuff over this, you could at least have sort of a leaf background or, you know, a series of saplings or something like that. So you can paint with, with entire, uh, entire images if you want uh, using the mixer brush. It's a really cool tool. Um, so with all of that uh, in mind, I'm going to uh, stop the video here. And then when we come back, um, we're going to talk about um, creating additional colors to our scene. Uh, we're going to apply our signs and we're going to start doing some of our, our detail painting. Uh, so we'll stop there for now. Uh, thanks for listening.